Hello and welcome to our viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and MC here at Gold Learning. And here at Gold, we are preparing for our second annual Gold Obstetric Online Conference of 2020. And with me today is one of our speakers. I'm so honored to be here today with, in company with uh, Professor Diego Iris de Campos. Welcome. Thank you, Kristen. It's an honor for me to be here with you and to be part of this uh, gold experience. Oh, thank you so much for making time for us here. We do uh, very much appreciate it. So tell our listeners a little about yourself to start off the, uh, our little conversation here. Where in the world are you located? So I'm, a, I'm an obstetrician by a profession and I'm still practicing. I still practice in the labor ward. I'm, uh, at the moment, I'm, uh, um, I'm working at the uh, Santa Maria Hospital in Lisbon, which is the capital of Portugal. It's the university hospital. It's a huge hospital. Uh, I didn't start here. I started in, um, in Porto, which is the second city in the north of Portugal. But again, as an obstetrician and as an academic, so I started my academic career there and then moved to, moved to Lisbon something like three years ago. And, uh, being an obstetrician and teaching is what I what I do on a day to day basis. Wonderful, thank you for us. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, being in a big teaching hospital in Lisbon, that's uh, probably uh, quite a lot of things going on there, also in the labor ward, and, and a great opportunity for teaching there, uh, um, obstetricians and midwives there as well. Tell us a little bit about the situation now with COVID nineteen. What have you seen there? Well, uh, curiously, in contrast to what has been going on in, in Spain, which is uh, a country where they've had a lot of, of, of patients with COVID, we have been a bit more lucky. We haven't had so many cases, and we get uh, we get uh, some cases in pregnancy, but uh, usually because women are, are, are uh, younger, uh, we don't have any serious. We haven't had any serious uh, maternal COVID case yet. Mm. We we do a lot of screening. We do, uh, uh, you know, so we, we we separate women in labour, obviously, uh, from the others who are not COVID. But it's, it's basically a symptomatic carrier. So uh, it made some difference to the way we're practicing, but not that much in terms of our obstetric practice. Well, thank you for that. I'm glad to hear that uh, uh, your area is uh, faring well when it comes to this challenging time now. Uh, you are also a specialist in intrapartum fetal monitoring. Tell us a little bit about that aspect of your, of your professional journey. Well, yeah, it has been my main area of interest uh, for a long time, I think since 1993, which is quite a lot of time. So I've been uh, dedicating a, a, a lot of my research time basically to two things. Uh, one of them is the development of uh, computer analysis. So I've been working with the, the software engineers that have uh, uh, developed a system for computer analysis and I'll be talking about it uh, in a bit more in detail in, in the talk. But uh, I've also, uh, my other the area of interest uh, in terms of research and development is also uh, simulation. So I've been working with a company that was first in the US and then it was bought by another company in Canada, in Montreal, uh, to develop uh, one of the uh, simulators uh, of obstetric emergencies. It's, uh, it's called Lucina, it's by CAE Healthcare in Montreal. And that was quite a challenging thing because uh, it, you know, again, it required talking with engineers it required talking with uh, with with software engineers uh, to develop uh, a, a mannequin that would be useful for for training midwives and for training uh -huh. uh, doctors and that's that, that was quite a quite a challenging but also a very exciting part of my life that sounds absolutely fascinating. I have to tell you, we had, a, when I was in training at midwifery school, we had one of those mannequins, maybe not this, you know, I don't know what company it came from, uh, but it was quite interesting. And <laughs> and I can imagine, and uh, talking to, uh, you know, fellow students at that time, we were marveling at this, uh, how much must have gone into it, you know, from programming, from making sure that, you know, uh, it's kind of somewhat realistic to, to certain other aspects. So, so that's quite a, it must have been a, a very interesting part there to be part of this development of one, right? 
It was, and I, you know, I think the just the fact that you uh, you need something that's convincing, that's realistic, or yeah. I mean, at least a little bit realistic, for, for people to get into the scenario. Otherwise, if it's not realistic, then it will keep on distracting people. So, right. Um, so, so for us, I think that was exciting, and we were, I was lucky to to work with the simulator both in Porto and now in Lisbon, because we do a lot of multi-professional team training in obstetric emergencies with the uh, with the uh, with doctors with midwives with the uh, anesthesiologists with with, with neonatologists uh, and that's uh, you know i think that's it's it's very useful and it's a very uh, interesting uh, experience because it gets you into some of the problems that sometimes occur in the labor ward and mm -hmm. not always are they related to technical aspects sometimes they're, they're related to the soft skills of communication Absolutely. of yeah. uh, you know task management and that's uh, it's i think it's it's an eye opener you know to, to to rethink the way we sometimes do things in the living room Absolutely. Communication is a big, big part of that. I mean, uh, as well, yes, of course, the technical still skills need to be there. But uh, one of the things uh, we often see in these kind of simulated um, uh, scenarios, be it with a mannequin or <laughs> without it or in other other ways, that it often comes down to effective communication, right? And and I must tell you, I find it very eye-opening, too, when we had these kind of trainings that, that uh, to see, oh, you know, where really um, I myself can improve in my communication style or uh, to be part of this it's uh, it's true it's quite interesting yeah absolutely I mean it's it's, it's a time for reflection also I think um, both during and after the scenario on how you how you perform and how you can actually improve and we can we can all improve the way we perform uh, in the labor world and elsewhere but I think it's really for the person itself it's it's really an opportunity to to look at the future and to, to see how you can do better in the future Absolutely wonderful. Uh, let's talk about your presentation here at Gold. It's titled "The Evidence and Future of Intrapartum Fetal Manage Monitoring." Give us a little overview of what what uh, you will be speaking about there. Well, you know, intrapartum fetal monitoring is uh, is um, performed very differently in different parts of the world, and you know, you can get the um, extreme of how it's done. Well, let's say the United States, for instance, in which you do uh, continuous uh, mm -hmm. called electronic fetal monitoring. I, I prefer to call it cardiotography, but I'll be talking about, about that. But you do that continuous fetal monitoring through during the whole of, of, of labor. On, on the other extreme, you go to places in Africa, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes in some places in India where there's no monitoring at all. Uh, and then it's it's a very emotional thing for 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 some people I I, I find because uh, uh, some people are strong and convicted that uh, you should do uh, cardiotography to everybody while others think it's you shouldn't do it at all you should do it just intermittent auscultation so it's not just I think it's not just a scientific problem sometimes it's uh, it, it's it's got to do with people's convictions and sometimes. Uh, it's even a symbol of of uh, being a midwife or being a, a doctor, and I think it's. Uh, I, I don't think that makes a lot of sense because what we need to do is make sure we get we get the best uh, to the to, to our labouring women and to treat mm -hmm. them adequately. And I think you know women uh, obviously want to be treated uh, uh, with respect. They want to be treated uh, to have a positive experience. Uh, they also need to make sure that you know they're safe and that the fetus uh -huh. is safe. So I'm uh -huh. going to be, uh, you know, trying to make a point that safety is important. It's not right. just safety is important for the fetus, and for that I think you need to be monitoring as much as you can. Uh, so I, I'm I'm sure that some people will not agree with me and 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 will think that uh, you know it's, it should be otherwise. But this is the point I'm going to make, which is my opinion that we should not uh, uh, we should not touch on anything that's related to safety because we want to make sure we get the best possible outcome, and that's part of the positive birth experience too. Well, thank you so much, Professor Diogo Iris de Campos, to sit down with me here and chat a little bit about your background, your work, and our the presentation you have with us here at Gold. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to our listeners now, the presentation will be available 
uh, we start the conference off in November 9th, on November 9th. And if you would like to find out more about this presentation and the other presentations in this conference, we invite you to visit goldobstetrics.com. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye-bye for now.